Okay, so I've had a request to have a look over some of these questions that were from the, the task that I set you. Um, it doesn't matter if I do these now, you can always have a go at doing them yourself afterwards without my help. Um, but I thought it would be good to go over some of these. So I'm going to do question one and then question 4a. And I'll do question two and question 4b. And then I'll leave question three and question 3c for you to do. Okay. So question one says, sketch the graph of y equals cos x in the interval, oh, sorry, cos theta this time, not that that makes any difference. And that means that we want the interval to be between 180, minus 180, and 180. Now, normally, if you think about the cos graph, and you should think about what this looks like in your head to begin with, we know that the cos graph starts from the top, it comes down, and it goes to the bottom, and it comes back up again. But that's between 0 and 360. So it looks like our graph is going to end at this point that we have here. And it looks like our graph is going to come backwards to this point here, so that we have between minus 180 and 180. I'm going to draw that again so that it's just a little bit neater, and then I can use it for question 4. Okay. So let's have a look at this. So I'll draw my axes not very good at doing it on here. And we know that cos starts from the top and for to 180, it's going to do that kind of shape. And again, for minus 180, it's going to do that kind of shape. I'm going to just finish off what the rest of the graph would have looked like because it will help us remember what that should be. So pardon me for these not being drawn super clear. That would be 180 that would be 270, and that would be 360. Here's the minus 180. This would be minus 270, and we know that it finishes up. It would finish at minus 360 if we were to continue that. The only bit we're interested in is that blue section that we've got here. So instead of the x-axis, it's the theta axis. doesn't really matter. So we've got 0, 90, and 180. And then here we have minus 90, and we have minus 180. Okay, so I'm just going to skip 2 and 3 because 4a actually uses that. It says that cos of 30 is equal to root 3 over 2. And we want to use that graph to find another value for which cos of theta is root 3 over 2. So one of the values is 30. So that means if I look at my graph, if I go 30 along from here, I will get a value which this bit here, I can't really write it in there, is root 3 over 2. Now, do you remember I said if this distance here is 30, I can also go backwards that distance 30, and that should show me something else. So if I go backwards 30, because it's symmetrical, when I go up to the graph, it looks like that should also give me root 3 over 2. So the answer for this bit, the other value, which is root 3 over 2, is going to be when theta is minus... 30. Okay, there are only going to be two places where we have root 3 over 2 here and whoops, here, which one of them corresponds to 30, the other place is minus 30. If you're going to look for some other values, it would be all the way over here, which is not technically part of our graph, and it would be all over here, which is technically not part of our graph as well. Okay, I'm going to do question 2 as well, and then I'll leave you to do question 3. So question two says, sketch the graph of y equals tan theta in the interval minus 180 to 180. So I'm going to draw y equals tan theta. This is like the tan x graph, apart from instead of it saying x, it's just going to say theta. Now I'm going to draw my axes. Let's see if I can do them better than I did last time. Okay, now we know the tan graph goes from zero and it goes shooting up like this. And you must draw in that there is an asymptote, and that is at 90. Then we know it comes along like this, and it crosses again at 0. And then after that, there's going to be a bit of the graph that they don't actually want. There's going to be this extra bit. Like last time I did that in a dotted black line, I'll do the same thing. And there'd be an asymptote there, and there'd also be this last part of it. But we don't actually want these bits that go up to 360. The only bit we're interested in is between 0 and 180. So that's why I stopped the blue line at that point. Now if I go backwards, from your memory, you should see that the graph comes down like this, and there is this dotted line, that word that we used before, the asymptote of minus 90. And then we know it comes 
it's coming down here, it's going to come up and it's going to come along to this point here and this bit, it goes another 90 along, will be minus 180. Now if we were to keep continuing that graph, we would have the dotted line, this is a bit that won't be included, this value here where I'm drawing the asymptote would be minus 270 and then because it's come down it would have a final up bit here that would be at minus 360. But we only want the blue section that it's talking about here. It then says, um, given that tan 60 is equal to root 3, so tan of 60 is equal to root 3. So that means when I go to 60 here, this distance, which is 60, that gives me a value on the y-axis of root 3. Now, root 3 is about 1.7 something. Now, if you look across, you can find out the next time that you're going to have that value of root 3. So if we look across here, looks like the other place we have it is from here. Now, I don't know if you remember me saying this, but you can only move from the 180s and the zeros. Like here, we moved from the zero either way. So you're going to move to try and get to that position. You're going to move 60 in this direction. So moving 60 forwards from 180, you end up at tan of minus 120. So it's tan of minus 120 for this bit that we've got here. So our value of theta for this part, the other one is going to be minus 120. And you can check that in your calculator. You can just go and press tan of minus 120, and you do indeed get root 3. Now let's do this next one in a different colour. I'll use this kind of purple that we've got here. It then says, when is tan of theta um, equal to minus root 3? Well knowing that we can either go from 0 or from 180, we need to go somewhere where it has a value of minus root 3. I forgot to put my minus in there. So it looks like the way that I could get to this one, and it's this one that I'm going to be talking about to begin with, looks like I could go from 0, and this line is always the one that we'll be using, the distance of that line, looks like it's going to be going 60 backwards. Now if it's 60 backwards, that means it's going to be a minus 60 to hit that minus root 3. So this first one, one of the values, it says it's going to be minus 60. Now if we look across, it looks like there's going to be another part where the blue graph can be that, and it looks like it's going to be here. Now remember, you can only move from 0 or 180. So to get to that value, looks like it's going to have to have moved 60 degrees backwards from the 180. And if that gap is 60 degrees backwards, that means it's going to end up at 120, because 180 take away 60 is 120. So we think those two values, using the symmetrical properties, are going to be minus 60 and 120. So I'm just going to double check. I'm going to try the tan of minus, one, six, uh, tan of minus 60, and it is root 3. And I'm also going to try the tan of 120, and it is also minus root 3. I think I said they were both minus root 3, which they should be. So what you'll do for this question here is you need to be careful about how you sketch the sine graph. And then you're going to use this information to try and find the values of theta. You might find these a bit confusing, um, but you can change them to numbers if it's easier for you to think of them as numbers about where they might be. Um, I'm sorry that we can't do this in class. I think it would be much easier to explain these things to you in person. Um, but we'll be doing lots more on these ideas when we come back to doing trig equations and things like that as well. Okay, guys, hope it goes well. Thank you.